Judy Okoye alikuwa live akieleza upande wake wa story na akieleza shutuma kwamba Judy alifungua mikataba ya siri na mke wake na wakawa wanamwibia pesa eh, kupitia miraba ya P Square yani Peter ndiye ambaye alirezi hiyo story kwa hiyo wakamshtaki bana katika EFCC mamlaka ya kudili na fedha na hii kupelekea bank account zake kuweza kufungwa. Hivyo mwongea kwa lisali moja na imebidi aongee maana familia yake imekuwa ihusishwa mara kwa mara na hizi tuhuma. E, hivyo alianza kueleza kwamba back story ya P Square na kuzungumzia mgogoro e, pale ambapo uliweza kuanzia na wamekuwa kigombana na pita na wamekuwa Uh, wakimuhusisha sana mtu mzima uh, Jude kwenye hii story na ndio maana alipata nafasi ya kuweza kuzungumza sasa kuhusu EFCC ni kwamba Peter D aliyepeleka malalamiko hayo walimuhoji na kumuuliza pesa hizo zimetoka wapi na zinaenda wapi sasa jinsi ilivyo uh, ni kwamba wana mirabaha ambayo kila mtu alitakiwa apate asilimia zake kutokana na jinsi ambavyo walikuwa wakifanya kazi na yeye Judy alikuwa anachukua asilimia zake 20 sasa Peter alianza kutoshare hizo royalties kwa miaka minne au mitano kuanzia 2021 uh, waliporudi kwenye game Peter na Po wakataka mirabai iwe wazi ila Peter yeye aligoma ndio maana hiyo mirabai ikawa ni asiri kwa hiyo ye yeah, uh, Jude anadai amejitolea maisha yake yote kuwa na P Square na kuna vitu vimemkera sana maana miaka nane afanye kazi na P Square anasema aliuza mpaka nyumba yake ili aweze kufanya biashara zake kwa hiyo hapo ambapo alipo na mafanikio yote ambayo yako nayo sasa hivi ni kutokana na jitihada zake Judy anaeleza kwamba Peter alikuwa kinunua magari na pesa alikuwa akipata huku mzake Po alikuwa na investi ile pesa na baadaye Peter anakuja kuuliza hiyo pesa imepatikana wapi. Chochote Peter ambacho anaeleza uh, ama anaelezea watu ni kwamba wamuone yeye Judy ni tapeli na amesema Peter anahitaji maombi eh, anahitaji msaada maana mwaka 2021 walimpigia simu awe meneja wao tena lakini yeye aliwataka wakae na waongee kutokana na yale ambayo alitokea lakini hakuona hilo likiweza kutekelezwa yani kwamba hawakumrudia tena Peter alimpa condition po na Peter ndiye ambaye alisema kwamba Judy asio meneja wao tena A, anasema hata Peter alipokuwa akimuomba ushauri Judy Judy akiwa akimpa ushauri Peter lazima mkaripie hivyo akaona sio sawa bora akae pembeni tu amesema kuna siku bana alikuwa kwa Paul lakini Peter akawa anabishana sana na Paul nadhani ilikuwa katika masuala ya kikazi eh kwenye swala la kuchangia nyimbo zikuwa kama tano hivi kwa pamoja na E, ni mambo kidogo ya, 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 ya kazi kwa hiyo anasema ni kama alibishana hivi kidogo wapigane aliamua kuta kuamulia bila kusikilizwa na siku nyingine sasa hiyo ambayo tayari Peter alikuwa ameshamfungulia mashtaka yeye Jude anasema Peter alikuwa na nyumbani kwake na alimkuta mtoto wake nje akiwa anacheza e, Jude anashangaa wakati huo e, tayari akiwa amechamfungulia mashtaka hayo na anacheza na mtoto wake Eh inawezekanaje hilo swala? Lakini mwishoni kabisa anasema kuna bloga mmoja ambaye Peter alimuomba mpige picha akiwa EFCC kisha zambazo kwenye mitandao ya kijamii. Ilikuwa ni kama kumchoresha hivi mtu mzima Judy. Sasa Judy amesema ana dada na kaka na mashangazi wote wameongea nao lakini imeshindikana. Yeye ni nani kwa sababu yeye pia eh, ni kaka mdogo tu kwenye familia. Sasa eh, story nzima hii hapa nimekusogezea eh, vipande viwili. Tutasikiliza nusu saa kwanza na nusu saa pili utaisikiliza hapa hapa eh, kwenye channel yetu. Hivyo ifuatilie kwa karibu story hii that there's when money got into our account 25700 and something thousand dollars that me and Paul within four hours or whatever came and split the money in half yeah it was true i saw it hey you what up guys so in this video i'm going to be showing you what jude okoye you know came out to see and what has been happening right now because we know you know from my previous video i'm going to be posting the card at the top right right now so that you can click on the video and watch it before you watch this one but in case you don't know what is happening like peter is seriously on jude's case guys in fact peter filed a petition for jude you know accusing him of fraud guys and in fact i i talked about the full story in my previous video but in this particular video jude came out and jude has replied peter and has narrated everything that happened you know between him which is jude peter 
then Paul Okoye, three of them guys. So even Tenny, the likes of Tenny came out to even speak about this, which I'm going to be playing later in this video. So you just watch and tell me what you think about it on the comment section. Who do you think is right here? Do you think Jude is lying? Because a lot of people have been saying, oh, what he said is not very convincing. So do you think he's lying? Do you think Peter is right or do you think Paul is right? Drop your opinion in the comment section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. All right, welcome everybody. Um, sorry for uh, wasting your time. Uh, three minutes after seven. Okay, I I don't know if I should start by introducing myself. Uh, and um, all right, my name is Judo Koye. Uh, you guys know me as Jude and Jesus of the P Square. Even if uh, I have not had anything to do with P Square for the past eight years, but it's all good. My name is Judo Koye. Jude and Jesus. And uh, due to what has been going on for I think for the past weeks, um, normally for me, be myself, uh, now I approach stuff like this, I normally sit it out. Uh, but I have to come and uh, make this live video because it wasn't about me anymore. Uh, my family was involved in the whole thing and uh, I have to come and tell you guys what it's, uh, uh, it's all about. <laughs> Okay, first of all, let me start from uh, the uh, the beginning of uh, Peace Square. I, I think most of you already know the story and how uh, smooth criminals started through MNPP, then they now became Peace Square. How Peter was more of a uh, smooth criminal dancing and Paul was more of uh, singing after he broke out from dancing with the smooth criminals, started following me around and uh, started, you know, singing. The first song that Paul ever wrote in his life was Say Your Love. That was when I knew that there's something there. And when they went to the University of Jaws, I was like, okay, this is, you know, dancing, Michael Jackson, imitating Michael Jackson in the secondary school uh, time period is fine and okay. But now that you're in university, you cannot come to the university and still be, you know, doing such because people are expecting that you should be upgraded by then. Why don't you guys, you know, fuse yourself together and possibly dance to your own music instead of you imitating Michael Jackson, Paul, bring your song, fuse it together, you guys can form a team and... That was how Peace Square came about to be. So, um, long story short, we we started the hustle from Joss uh, together. Then we now came to Joss, uh, came to Lagos, and uh, everything is history. How I, we sacrificed everything to make the team work. How we came from Joss having nothing to Lagos, and uh, you know working together as a team till this moment of a uh, crisis here and there, every now and then, we started in 2013, ending of 2013. So, it's crazy because it's kind of emotional, but it's something that needs to be said and it has to be said just to get the record straight. I, uh, because I have any issues from 2013 ending to early of 2014, I tried as much as possible to, because it has been going on since, but from 2013, 2014 was when it went out to the public, when it became public knowledge. And by then, uh, it was so difficult then to curtail, because once something leads, seeps out to the public, it becomes a public uh, 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 thing that you cannot be able to take back. So from 2014, Peace had issues, 2015, 2016, 2017. Then they now had a break of almost five years and came back in 2020, ending of 2021. And now again, they're having issues again. Why I'm here is because I was, one way or the other, involved in the Peace Square saga once again, even though I have never had anything to do with Peace Square for the past eight years. Since 2016 to date, I've not been Peace Square's manager, I've not been Peace Square's director, I've not been Peace Square's anything. I have just been on my own doing my own real estate business, focusing on my own hustle. And one way or the other, anytime there has to be any crisis affecting Peace Square, my name will one way or the other find itself in the midst. I don't know how it happens, but Peter seems to see still have a way of bringing me inside the problem. So uh, let's start with um, the EFCC case. <laughs> In uh, February, I think February ending, I started getting calls from people that I've done businesses with, people that I have made payments to, and people that have made payments to me. Every transaction I've ever had, uh, tell me that EFC invited them 
and uh, they were asked to come and you know account for whatever business they had with me. And most especially, all of them were all more on the Doom account. So I was believing that, okay, this problem has to do with the new government that is in place and that they are chasing Binance, they are chasing everybody that's making, you know, the FX rise and whatever. I was like, oh, they'll just look at it and just move past. Until somebody that um, paid Naira into the account called me and told me, hey, they asked him to come and explain for what he did, uh, what the 500,000 Naira he paid in my account in 2015 was for. Then I was like, okay, this is not about fx or binance anymore something fishy is going on so it's kept on coming like that everybody i've ever done businesses were calling me different people and then in uh, 20 uh in the uh, 22nd i think 22nd of uh april two days to my birthday i was invited to come to the bncc i went there with paul i didn't know that paul was even invited he showed me that oh he was even invited the same day I said, okay let's go to the same day let's go to the same day when i went there with our lawyer we went there they now opened the file and they were asking me okay this money was found in your account i said yes this money belongs to P-Square. I said, yes. So what is it doing in your account? I was like, ah, why are you asking me what P-Square's money is doing in my account? It is my own share of P-Square. They were like, no, that is a petition against me. I said, okay, let me go to, let me see what the petition was about. And then they gave me the petition. That's when I knew that. It was Peter that wrote a petition against me since December ending of uh, 2023. The investigation started in 2024, January. And the petition was saying that I opened a secret company and I was siphoning P-Square's money to my personal account. I was like, no. It's, this is royalties. Paul has the same publishing royalty coming to him every quarter. Peter has the same royalties coming to him every quarter. Jude has royalties also coming to him every quarter. We have an agreement within the three of us that anything that has to do with P-Square proceeds goes three ways to the three of us. Peter gets his own, he shares with us. Paul gets his own, he shares with us. I get my own, I share with two of them. That's how it has been going. Until 2017, or rather, yeah, 2017, 2016, when P-Square had issues with fighting in the, in the Fesos Kiamos office and all that, there was a split of P-Square. Peter stopped sharing. Paul came and gave me money. I was like, yo, I think you can keep your money because Peter has stopped sharing. So I think what is going to happen now is that everybody should start keeping what they get because Peter is incommunicado now. Nobody can reach him. So I think that's the best thing. The Pope was like, yeah, let's everybody keep what they get. And that's how it has been for over four and a half to five years or thereabout till 2021 November when they came back together. And I did the noble thing, which was I returned the catalog back to the fold so that the three of us can be sharing it equally as usual, which was what was expected of me to do. But surprisingly, they refused to return their own. As I'm speaking to you right now, they are still keeping the royalty publishing that they receive quarterly. Peter is still keeping his own to himself. Paul is still keeping his own to himself. The one I was keeping to myself, I have returned to the fold. The three of us are sharing since 2022, early 2022, something like that. That was my story to the EFCC. And they said, okay, but the two of them are P-square. That Peter said that I was, uh, I was uh, an unemployed graduate from JOS that didn't have any job. And they had issues, when they had issues with their former manager, may so rest in peace, uh, Bio, uh, that, that they now invited me to come and manage P-square for them so I can be on salary. I told them no, but I was the one that brought them to Lagos. That I was one that even made the group P square. They said, No, that was what Peter told them. I said, Okay, that means when I'm coming tomorrow, I'm going to bring my CSCs, I'm going to bring my MOUs, I'm going to bring every document that I had to prove that I am not just a bystander, I am part and parcel of P square. They said, Okay, the, the, what, I should not blame them that the only P square they know is just Peter and Paul and T. I said, Yeah, I know, I understand. The next day, be my birthday, I tried to excuse them that, Okay, can I be allowed not to be there on my birthday so that I can have time to attend to my guests and everything? They said, No, 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 that's okay, I should just come that day that they're going to release me uh, by 12, 1 o'clock so I can go and attend to my guests. I said, no problem. So the next day I came. Now I came with Trust Paul. I didn't come with my, my main lawyer. And um, I gave them all the documents. The guy looked at me and was like, wow, did Peter sign this? I said, look at his signature. This is the CAC that opened the company with, both Square Records and Outside Entertainment. They were like, you are even more than P square. I was like, I don't understand what you mean. They said, look, you are you are entitled to 40% shares. Why they told them I'm entitled to 30%, 30%. I said, well, I'm not supposed to say it with my mouth. You can see. 
Then they said, okay, uh, if that's the case, so I should come and prove, I should prove to them that we have an MOU that we're supposed to be sharing it equally. I said, if the CSC is not enough, okay, we have an MOU, this is the MOU. The MOU clearly stated that the Peace Square comprises of three entities, Peter, Paul, and Jude. Every process of the Peace Square goes three ways to Peter, Paul, and Jude. Nobody has the right to take every Peace Square song, catalog, uh, uh, video, likeness, image, outside the benefit of Peace Square. So, in a nutshell, I was able to establish that I am not a bystander that I was Peace Square, that I played my role in the Peace Square uh, situation. Long story short, they started asking me some questions that I felt very irritated about, even though I did not understand them, but now I, I do understand. They were asking me, okay, I, I built... Uh, um, I built a mansion in Ikoi. I said, yes. Where did I get the money from? Uh -uh. No, it became, I've already explained to you what the money you said you pet, it was petitioned against me in the account, what it was for, that this is my own uh, money I was keeping from the royalty. Go and check Peter's own. You'll see his own in his account. Go and check Paul's own. You'll see his own in his account. Peter cannot come and say, Jude is stealing our money from us. You come and just look at the account and see Peter's money. I say, ah, Peter said uh, he's stealing his money. Look at the money here. I said, no. Check Peter's account. you see his own share there. Check Paul's account. you see his own there. Why are you just flashing the light on my own alone? So, uh, I told him that. Now you're asking me, I built a mansion. Where did I get the money from? This one, where did I get the money from? I was like, Yo, Peace Square ended in 2017. I, 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 have, de I have devoted my life from the day I, even before I went to university, I've devoted my life in Peace Square. There is nothing else I do aside Peace Square. I put my life on hold just to make sure that Peace Square succeeds. And all of a sudden, I, I am wanted out of Peace Square. I didn't have a problem. I saw what you guys are saying. Ah, Jude, is it by force? Leave Peace Square alone. Leave Peace Square alone. I understand that the fans are more interested in what their favorites want, not what the truth is or what is the right thing to do. And by 2016, I decided to say, okay, no problem. If this is what they wanted, I needed to step down. Uh, let me step down. Let me step away. I stepped away. Peace Square ended. I had another thing to do. I sold my house in America. I sold my house here. I put all my sources that I had together to go and build that. I even borrowed money from a few uh, colleagues and friends to get that uh, 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 project finished. So why are you asking me where? So they now said, okay, so I'm not cooperating. No problem. I should go and get it shorty. I'm going to be detained and here and there and there. Okay. It happened that I was I was I was taken to the booking section. They, they, they removed my wristwatch. They bagged my wristwatch, my shoes, and everything. Took off my, you know, jewelry and my wallet and everything. And I was about to be sent in when somebody else now came and said, "Okay, that I should wait a bit." Then after like thirty minutes, then I came back and said, "Okay, that the boss wants me to come and uh, to come out and come back tomorrow morning." That's how I I left. I think I left around uh, midnight, close to midnight. Of that same birthday. Before I got home, all my guests have finished eating my food, my drinks, without me being present, and they've gone. But I think the ones that came and left understood what was going on, but they were close friends, so I didn't have anything to do. But so it was still kept, you know, hush hush that period. So that was how I was detained, so to speak, the detaining. I spent the whole day from nine o'clock in the morning till that midnight of that same day of my birthday. So I literally spent my birthday in the EFCC custody or detention or whatever you want to call it. So, and I came back, I was like, okay, seriously, what is the meaning of this? Somebody is uh, sending a petition against me that I siphoned money. It's like saying, you are accusing me of having a bag of rice that belongs to three of us, but you have a dozen bag of rice that belongs to three of us in your possession. How are you accusing me of the one that I have? Okay, if that's your case, let's go and see how it's going to end. The EFCC people wanted to keep it hush hush until it came out in the public domain that, oh, Peace Square are uh, now in the EFCC, they're having tussles and here and there. I had nothing to do with Peace Square. I just had a petition against me about royalties. Then all of a sudden, the royalty thing now shifted when, this, when he found out that all these allegations are not holding anything because the, what he told them that me being a bystander is not what was established. It was established that I was part and parcel of Peace Square on papers and everything. So he now went now back to 2009, uh, 2008, 2009, when we came to Lagos, the first account we ever opened for me to explain every transaction that's ever happened in our account for over almost 19, 20 years. I can't even remember the money I spent last week. And someone is asking me to account for money spent 19 years ago, what it was for. Every money that has my name on it in the account must be explained. I was like, okay, no problem. 
let me get it. let me see what I can be able to do with that. I was able to, by his grace, have, if not all of them, most of the accounts that he was pointing at. Most especially, there's these three that he was mentioning. I think that's how he was trying to get Paul involved in the whole thing. Saying that uh, me and Paul were sharing monies without giving him his own share. He now pointed out where there was an account where Paul had $100,000 and there's none for him. And that place where Paul had $150,000, there was none for him and one of whatever. Then I was like, okay, let me go and look at it and find out what, because it's been like, that was 2013 and 2014. I said, let me go and check it out. That was about 10 years ago. Two, three days later, I came back with my defense and I was like, this $100,000 he's complaining about was exactly the same day he got engaged to his girlfriend, then girlfriend, now wife. He bought a Range Rover for her, same day, same time. Paul did not buy a Range Rover for anybody. He said, dude, put my own in my own account and I, I did that. Why are you calling EFCC on me to come and explain what Paul is doing with $100,000 in, in, in his account when you use your own to buy a Range Rover to engage your wife? Same day. The second one of $100,000 uh, $100, was on the middle of January 2014. You told me you wanted to buy a Bentley. I gave you $200,000. Paul said, I'm not buying a Bentley. Put $150,000 in my account and send me $50,000 to go to America to catch fun with. And now you are asking me to come to EFCC to come and explain why Paul had $150,000 in his account, an account and you don't have yours. Paul has $150,000 in the account, you had a Bentley. The thing was so annoying, so frustrating that I am now in the, I am now the person that has to be explaining what your memorable, memorable uh, times, periods are supposed to be for you. Am I supposed to be the one to remind you of when you engaged your wife with a Range Rover? That was when Paul had his money. The data is very clear there. Am I supposed to be the one to tell, tell you that you bought a Bentley? You bought a Bentley, but not buy a Bentley. That's why Paul had $150,000 in an account. Now, I am now heading the EFC to come and be explaining that. That I'm giving Paul that amount, then I'll go behind and share it with Paul. Now, all those accusations now went. There was one again that he, hold, he held very dear. Very little amount, 25,007. That's why he got uh, uh, Jason Njoku involved or something. That there's when money got into our account, 25,700 and something thousand dollars, that me and Paul within four hours or whatever came and split the money in half. Yeah, it was true. I saw it. And I was wondering, why would 25,000 something get into our account and me and Paul would share the money into two immediately? Then I was like, okay, let me go and investigate. And I went back and I checked. And below and behold, there's an email that Peter wrote to Iroko. Uh, telling them that they should split the money into three and send him his own because Peace Square is having issues and he doesn't want the money to be put in our in our general account. Jesse now wrote an email saying, okay, gentlemen, after discussing individually with the three of you, this is how the money is going to be shared. Jude plus Paul, $25,750. Peter, $12,850. Peter's money was sent to him directly. Jude plus Paul's money was now sent to Northside Entertainment account, which he now saw in the account and picked it out and said, this is the evidence that Peter, Jude and Paul are sharing money behind his back. This thing happened in 2016. And EFCC is holding me, asking me, interrogating me on that to explain. What am I trying to say? Everything about this EFCC thing is just mind-boggling and crazy. Now let's go to the secret company. My people, the secret company is none other than Northside Music Entertainment. I signed Sinter Morgan with Northside Music Entertainment. All Sinter Morgan videos has Northside Inc. in it. How is it a secret company to Peter all of a sudden in 2024? No, I want to understand. How is Northside Music that has a CAC certificate registration since 2015? How is Northside Music that was registered, according to him, the address of the secret company was my wife's that's how we got had to get my wife involved it has to do with my wife's uh, people's or my wife's home address please look at the address here you can see what the address says it's 178 lola holloway omole both my address both my signature and if signature says the same thing can you see that look at it so why would it say umo keke if I'm a chidima, one seven eight Lola Holloway. Jude Okoye Chidoze, one seven eight Lola Holloway. This is the same Squareview. That's the address of Squareview where the three of us, Peter, Paul, and Jude, lives. Or oh, rather, we were living then. That was the address that was used to open the secret company. Peter has to look for a way to make whatever that has to do with my account look fraudulent. 
I don't understand. CAC, every company registered in CAC is in public domain. This thing has been registered for nine years. Sita Morgan was signed in um, October of 2013. Then I wasn't expecting to sign Sita Morgan. Like you people already know, the contract was prepared by Sita Morgan and her then manager, Joy. They came to my room, so they begged begging, begging, let us do, let us do this. So I did not have any company that I run with. I'm only running with Nostra Entertainment, which was P-Square and me. I was like, okay, to make it a little formal then, I now use the letterhead of Nostra Entertainment to print the first page of that agreement. But whatever write-up that is about the agreement is talking about Nostra Music Inc. This was 2013. We're talking about 11 years ago. What is so secret about Nostra Entertainment? Everybody in this entertainment circle knows about Nostra Entertainment except Peter. He, he, he all of a sudden was shocked that he discovered a secret company called Northside Entertainment, Northside Music. So now my wife got entangled in it because obviously you cannot open a corporate account in Nigeria as a single entity in 2015. I don't know about now. So I had to get her inside as my second director. And that was how her name ended up in these documents. When I went to the EFCC, we had to go and sit with the EFCC boss, the three of us. And the man asked Peter, why do you bent, are you bent on wanting to involve Jude's wife in this matter? We have investigated for six months. There is no where, there is no how, there is no means that we have found any connection that has to do with her. They just used her name as a second director in the company company registration. She's not in the banking. She doesn't have access to the account. She doesn't have any signature. She's not signature to the account. Why do you always want to have her involved? I've told you several times to leave her out of this. And Peter's answer was, uh, he has to get her involved because if the table was turned the other way around, we're going to involve his wife. That he should go and see what I was talking about his wife on social media. Please, I want to ask you people, I have one million naira to send to anybody that can go on Google and find any time I posted a tweet or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, any defamatory whatever on Peter's wife. Please, the first person to send that thing to me on my DM will win one million naira. I don't understand. Sometimes I, I, I keep saying it from that 2016 that Peter needs help. Peter needs prayer. It looks as if I'm making a jerk of him, but that is the fact. There is nothing I have not done to a point that I have left Peace Square for you for eight years. I am not managing you. I am not directing for you. I'm not giving you any opinion. I am not. There is nothing. You are going your way. I'm going my way. I wish you guys well. When you guys came back in 20, 2021, you called me. There's a video out. Manager, manager, manager. I told you, oh, no, 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 no. Let's enjoy the euphoria for a day or two. We need to come together and find out when this is over, what happened four or five years ago. He said, why do I need... I said, no, no, no. You cannot post a brand like P-Square for four or five years. I just say, no, 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 not in the app. We don't come together. I said, no. If it's me that is faulty, tell me what I am doing wrong. If whoever that is... Everybody should just come and vent and call. We, apart from P-Square, that brotherhood should come together. You cannot just say, no, 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 it's okay. Let's... They said, okay, okay, we agreed. After a week, I noticed that nobody was calling me to, for the meeting. I had to call for the meeting myself. I said, okay, let everybody come together. Can we have this meeting? First thing that Peter came out from me, that Peter brought it out from his mouth was, I beg, no, you know, I beg. Me and Paul don't say, let bygone be bygone. That was his word. Me and Paul don't say, let bygone be bygone. I was like, oh, was it just Paul that was involved in this thing? Why can't we sit down? Even if it means bringing the wives too, let all of us as family sit down and fashion this thing out. Something strange happened that made this brand to go in, in, uh, in Comunicado for five, six years. No, four and a half, five years. We, it needs to be explained. If not, it's going to happen again. And Paul was like, no, 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 Jude, if you say let bygone, bygone, let's look for how to just... I let it go. I don't want to push it further because everybody was still enjoying the euphoria of their back. I, I just let it go. Then, we started talking about how to uh, start the new managing uh, of P-Square, the new ideas, and how to bring the brand back. I was trying to open an account that will have uh, the three of us alert a new account because the old one was been dormant for long. Only for my phone to ring, Peter called me. No, Paul called me. I said, where was I? I said, I'm in my parlor. I'm signing. He said, no, 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 leave that way. They try open. Just come for my house. I said, okay, what's the problem? He said, just come. I said, okay, give me two minutes. Let me finish filling this phone. He said, Jude, that's the way they feel. If you don't need them, just they come. I was like, I don't understand. Can't you give me two minutes? Now, Peter now picked the phone. I said, Jude, that's the way they feel. No need. You know, be saying, you know, go finish them. You don't need them. Just they come. 
the thing is, the paper is still here with me. I just told, told the guy that, you know what, when I finish filling the form, I'll call you to come and collect it. It's, I have an urgent meeting to attend to. I went to Paul's house. Peter was seated, Paul was seated. I sat down. Then Peter was like, they have done, uh, they have had a meeting yesterday and said that they are not going to need me for the peace we are moving forward. I was like, why? He said, because that is, the, that is the, the condition he gave Paul if they are going to come back as peace square, that Jude is not going to get involved. And for you people that are saying that Jude, Paul is always hiding Jude, Paul is always hiding Jude, Paul sided with Peter and got me kicked out of peace square. This thing happened uh, early December 20, 20, 20, 2021. Early December 20, I can't remember the date exactly. Does that one look like somebody that is siding with Jude? Does Paul look like somebody that is siding with Jude? Would I just by the way? So, I said, okay, no problem. Paul, you have done Root Boy for almost five years now. I gave you all the support. I gave you all the uh, assistance that you needed. I even edited all your videos, if not all, most of your videos, for free. Did you ever pay me? No. Have you ever played any show that you got as Root Boy and you paid me anything? He said, no. I gave you all the assistance. He said, for that for five years, even though nobody knew what I was doing for a living, he said, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to extend the same gesture to Peace Girl right now. You guys can take your decisions. You don't want me to have anything to do with Peace Square. Take your decisions on yourself, run your things. But if you need any help, I'm always available. Just do that that way. I left them. No hard feelings. Peace Square or no Peace Square, we still have to keep the brotherhood. And when I went to Abuja, a week later, at the poor side of the hotel that we were staying, there were like five of us that came from. Lagos, then some few Bobolada people, Abuja people that they have known from school days and everything. There were like 14, 15 of them, including us. I was just sitting drinking with Paul and some other people then. Peter walked up to me and was like, I want to seek my opinion for some, on something. That what do I think? What do I think if, if we go invite Medi for the show where they want to do by that December, their only first show in December, what, was my, what is my opinion? I said, invite Medi. I said, no. Why do you want to invite Medi? He said, because people go feel him. Um, the people know that Peace Square and Medi know they're in good times. But if you bring him as a surprise, he go wow the fans. I say, I say yes. I don't say go wow the fans, a normal thing. But has Medi reached out to you? Has he apologized? Has he made up with you after all the things he has said about you on social media? I was like, no. If, say, if Medi don't make up with him. I said, okay, if Medi has made up with you, has he made up with Paul? Has he made up with me? Peter exploded. What's he going to sign me? What, what, why does he give a fuck if Medi makes up with me? All he wants to do is show up. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Go enter Lagos. I go invite Medi. Come, make him come. Apologize to you. Once apologize, that's all. Fuck, fuck off. I don't, don't need you. I was like, what have I said now that is wrong? What have I said now that is packing this, this rage? You asked me a question, an opinion, and I gave it. Why are you by getting backlash now? As in, what is the meaning of this? I stood up. Shew, post manager, and uh, 20 stopped me. I was like, Jude, no, no, no. I said, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. I just want to go and cool off. I can't stay here. He was high screaming that I should be grateful that it is because of him and Paul coming together that I am here. I, I, I didn't understand what that statement meant. That I should be grateful that because they came together as peace square again, I now find myself in Abuja. As in, I cannot come to Abuja. I've never been to Abuja. I don't understand what that statement meant. That was what I heard. That's what I heard when I was leaving. And I left. I went to my room. I slept. I woke up the next day. I told myself, even the assistant that I was trying to render or give to them for free, I think I should just withdraw it and just move my I should not be interested in anything peacefully. And that was how it has been.